I want you to hear me clearly. There's a message that's being sent in this country of intolerance. Because of the events of the last election, people have tried to flex their muscles in the wrong way, but the devil is alive. Pastor Apostle Young speaks Spanish and I speak Portuguese. And I do take a crack at French. <laughs> but, and in particularly Louisiana, I need to know French. <laughs> but it's, it's a different type of French here. But here's what I'm saying. When I was watching TV the other day, they showed videos of people that was literally mad in restaurants, in a restaurant in particular, because everybody around them was speaking Spanish. They was minding their own business. They wasn't talking to him, but he was mad because they was exercising freedom to speak. I mean, I mean, there's no problem with those things. And then they showed an illustration of a law enforcement officer, a law enforcement officer, officer who used his authority, he abused his authority to check the identification of somebody because they spoke Spanish, trying to insinuate that there was, was illegal in the country. Hallelujah. As I pondered those things in my spirit early this morning, I want you to hear me. The Lord told me not to worry, hallelujah, that this nation is his. So for those of you listening, the United States belongs to God. And anything that's out of place, we know that God is going to protect his and God has got to still have got his hand on this nation, irregardless of the fact that there's elements that feel because of the last election that they can come in and flex their spiritual muscles. The devil is alive. God is going to have his way. Now, now, let's deal with this right now. This country was built upon diversity. And, and the people that formed this country left where they were because they was being oppressed. Now, in a hypocritical way, people in today's um, society want to impose their will on people who came here for the same reasons why we're here, because of freedom. We, we have the ability to exercise a lot of things. God has protected us. God has blessed, blessed us. Now, there's over... I believe 350 languages that are spoken here. This country was founded upon diversity. This country has a Spanish influence. It has an English influence, French influence. Hallelujah. It has a German influence because, there, because I, mean, there, I mean, there was a lot of German speaking people here, plus the Indians that were here and those that was brought here by way of slavery had language and dialect as well. Then that, that, that's, that's in addition to anything else. And then over the next few hundred years, people would come into this country. Now, in 32 states, based upon a push for English only, on a state level, English is considered an official language. But on the national level, unless something has changed that I don't know about, English is not considered the national language of this country. It's not. It's not. Even though there's been a push for it and people have tried to do that, from my understanding, unless somebody can show something differently from what, from my research, English is not the natural language. It's what they call the de facto language of this country. And yes, English is, 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 world, is worldwide and people know it. But just because it is worldwide don't give us, does not give us the right to impose our will on somebody else. Like I said, at, 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 the, at the time of this, at, at the latest of my research, United States has not made, on a national level, English as the official language. But people have been making a push for that. So if, so if you know something that I don't know, you, I'm, I'm open for you to share those things with me. Why is this relevant? Because we live, we because again, as believers, and I want you to hear me, a lot of people leave where they are because things are hard. And people come here looking for a, for a better life. Now, it is true, people need to, to try to go through the system and legalize themselves here. We understand those things. But for us to oppress people who want the same type of lifestyle that we have an opportunity to live, it's not of God. God has blessed this nation and people have the same right to be able to enjoy the fruits and benefits 
The same way we have an opportunity to do this thing too. Now, for believers, how does this relevant for believers? I want to encourage those that are evangelistic in nature to be broader minded in your sense of evangelism. We want you to reach out to people who don't speak the same language that you do. Hallelujah. And, 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 and in larger capacity, because again, people that come here, they have an advantage on most, most Americans. Because of the close proximity of the countries that are in Europe and in, in, in the countries in Africa that have opportunity to with different dialects, they come here speaking more than one language. Us that are born here sometimes in our arrogance think because people speak English, that because we, because everybody in English is known, that we don't want to take the time to be able to delve in somebody else's culture. The devil is a lie. That, that, that's a lie from the pits of hell. I realize that there's people that speak differently than me, that live differently than me, but they're still my brothers and sisters in Christ. They're born again. I've got people in this country and other countries that are part of the kingdom of God, but, but don't live like I do. But one of the things I've learned and one of the things I want to encourage you to do is to enlarge your capacity to reach out because you cannot learn the language without learning the culture. And, and, and there's trust levels that are, debuilt, are built up when we take the time to communicate beyond our comfort zone. Hallelujah. We deal with a lot of people that are in their ignorance. They want everything to be like they want it to be. And sometimes that's the way it is in church too. People want things to stay the way they're comfortable of being. And anybody that brings something else differently in, we, we, we categorize them, we, we, um, we ostracize them because they're different from us. The devil is a lie. God is going to use people that are different from you. God is going to use people that, that have a mentality that may be different from yours. And I want you to hear me. If you do not enlarge your capacity to receive you stifle the ability for God to administer to you on a different level because none of us are where we could be or where we're going. God many times has to use people that are different from us in order to bring us to where he wants us to be. This world is forever changing. Paul himself, the apostle who wrote a good portion of the New Testament, spoke multitudes of different languages. Hallelujah. We want you to enlarge your capacity today. We, we want you to be open to people that are different from you. And even though people, and this is the thing, in the body of Christ also, I want you to hear me. There's lots of people that may have slight differences in doctrine. Does not mean that they're not our brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, there's a difference in slight disagreements at certain points in scripture in heresy and just plain error. I'm not talking about that. We don't want to compromise the word of God just to say that we're friends with people. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the ability to be able to embrace people's differences. There's a reason why Jesus called 12 disciples and not one. There's a reason why there's different ministries in the body of Christ, in the church, because everybody's not going to be reached by one of two people. And as much as we try to bring people under one, or one banner, we do that from the standpoint of unity, but not in the standpoint of saying that we all got to eat and drink the same things. In the kingdom of God, there's a language of the kingdom. We understand that. But say, for example, I speak in tongues. I speak in a heavenly language. But my wife speaks in, in, a, in a heavenly language, too. We, we, we are one. But her, her, her language tongue is slightly different from mine. That doesn't mean there's something wrong with hers or something wrong with mine. We speak a heavenly language, but yet we are different. Hallelujah. And the spirit of the Lord wants to embrace diversity in his kingdom. Heaven, we believe, is diverse by what we see here on earth. And if we can't learn how to appreciate by, I mean, I mean, variety here on earth, then you, then you don't want no parts of heaven. The devil is a lie. We want you to understand that in this country, people came here because they want the same freedoms that we enjoy. And one of those is the ability to worship God. Now, we understand that people worship God they worship different idols and stuff like that. And when we have to be careful with the language that we're talking about right now. The big, let's eliminate this. There's lots of people that dispute 
which religion is real. I want you to hear me clearly. But God has put something, and we're going to tie this together to something a little bit deeper. Hallelujah. Because there's arguments here in the United States and in other parts of the world about what religion is real. It is not our job to force Christianity on other people. It's not our job to do that. It's our job to preach the message of the cross to people and give them a choice in order to receive. Now, what will help facilitate that choice is what God has put in the church, signs, wonders, miracles, and, and, and the things of the supernatural, which makes a distinction from every other religion. With what God has given us, we don't have to force people to believe like we believe. Yes, in, in these circumstances, we, are, we, we, we have a conviction. But unlike other religions that try to force their will upon people, there's other religions that will try to force their doctrine down your throat. The same way that people are trying to enforce their, their, their capacity to speak English on other people who, who, who don't have to do that in a lot of cases when they're talking with their family and friends, not in a, not, not in a setting where they're trying to communicate with somebody of a different language. They, they have a right to speak to their family in their native language. And the same way with religion, people try to force their religion on people. If what you have is the true thing, you don't have to force it on people. You, you, you don't have to threaten people, intimidate people, and make them bow to you. We don't have to beg people to serve Christ. When, when the spirit of the Lord is packaged in the way it's supposed to be, it speaks for itself. The kingdom speaks for itself in the supernatural power of God. This is powerful, y'all. Hallelujah, this is powerful. Just like we don't have to force people to speak English, we don't have to force people to serve God. God wants people that will serve him willingly and, and w without intimidation because he's a God of love. And that's just like in a marriage situation. You want somebody to love you for you, not because you manipulate them and control them because they do it of their own free will. Anytime we got to do man, use manipulation and, 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 and Gestapo tactics, that's not of God. You got the wrong thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God loves this nation. God himself loves this nation. And there's a message in that. That means anything that would try to, to interfere with the delicate balance, he has the power through the born again believer to intervene. We want to see the supernatural power of God released over this area. God loves this nation. God is with this nation. This nation belongs to God. Hallelujah. And if it belongs to God, guess what? We're a part of this nation. But we're also part of a bigger nation called the kingdom of God. We represent the kingdom of God here on this earth. And we also represent the diversity that the kingdom represents. And we want to be extensions of diversity no matter what language you speak, whether it's Portuguese, French, Chinese, whatever the case is, African dialects, it makes no difference. We want to be an extension of diversity in God's kingdom. This is Apostle Young with the Diversity of the Kingdom. I want you to be blessed today. We'll be talking to you again real soon.